everybody, welcome to my workshop. So today I decided to install a French cleat system along one of the walls of my workshop to help get my workshop a little bit more organized because it's kind of a dump right now. Um, French cleat systems are very easy to install. All it is is a strip of wood with a 45 degree bevel on it attached to the studs along the wall. Let me give you a close up. So we have a three quarter inch thick piece of plywood with a 45 degree bevel on the end of it. And when you take that strip and turn it upside down, you have an interlocking piece, okay? One of the beauties of the French cleat system is it's very customizable and easy to change things up. For instance, I have a spring clamp holder here which I've made with a piece of three quarter inch plywood and a three quarter inch plywood piece down the center so my spring clamps can clamp onto it. Then all I do is I put another French cleat on the back, the pieces mat together, and just like that, I have a little spring clamp holder on the wall. If I don't like where it is, I can just take it off and move it. Wherever I have a French cleat on the wall, this can be moved anywhere I want virtually. Not bad, eh? First things first, we've got to cut our plywood in half because a full sheet is too heavy for me and a little too dangerous to cut on the table saw. So I have a piece of cheap foam insulation underneath the plywood to help support my cut when I use my circular saw. And we're going to cut our first sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood about in half here. So I have a straight edge clamp that I'm clamping to the plywood and I'm using my circular saw with the blade height set a little bit deeper than the plywood so we don't cut through the foam. Now we can pick up the plywood and take it to our shop and trudge through the snow. Alright, time to set up my shop with now to be able to cut the sheet to the dimension I want. So I'm going to put my blade guard in here just to keep things nice and safe. We'll also attach my floating table to the main table to help support the plywood, seeing as it's four feet wide. Also going to use my extension table here too, just to get a little bit more support for the whole cut. We're going to make sure everything's nice and level here. And we're going to put some extension legs on the floating table just to make sure that it stays nice and strong for the whole sheet, because even half a sheet of plywood is still pretty heavy. Plug it in and we're good to go. Okay, we're going to carefully lift up that half a sheet of plywood and start ripping it down to a six inch width for starters. And I'm making sure that the plywood rides nice and flat against the fence so we don't cause any binding or any kickbacks. So one of the nice things about the Shawsmith is with all these extra tables we can get our sheet of plywood nice and supported all the way through. So we just had a pro of the Shawsmith, now we have a con. So the way that the Shawsmith is designed, if you want to do a bevel on a cut, you have to tilt the table and not the blade because the arbor does not actually tilt on the Shawsmith. So we have to tilt the table at a 45 degree angle, which is works fine for a six inch wide piece of wood like we have right now, but anything bigger than that, it gets kind of impossible. Now we just gotta move these tools out of the way to get to my wall. Earlier, I marked my stud locations along my workshop wall, just to make things a little bit easier. I got my first cleat up, I put one screw in one of the studs, I level it out with my level, and once it's good, I put two screws in each stud. Then we get our next cleat and we do the same thing. One screw in, level it out, two screws in each stud. Also, be careful that your lumber rack doesn't have lumber on it. I think I saw my life flash before my eyes. Well, moving on. No, don't drop that. Jeez, I can't seem to catch a break today. See what I mean? Yeesh. Anyway, with all the falling hazards over with, we can continue on with the second row of cleats. Now, what we're doing is we're starting a little bit further back, just because my little uh, electrical box there is kind of in the way, but that's okay. We can always put a smaller cleat in there later. On the third row, and we'll do the fourth and final row. Not bad at all. Now, let's put some stuff on it. My fire gauge holder. All it is is two pieces of three quarter inch plywood with a gap in between, and just a couple scrap pieces of plywood on top so that my miter gauge fits right nice on it there. Then we can attach it to the wall. 
Now I'm doing my best to make things as simply as I can. All this is is just a piece of three quarter inch plywood with a dowel sticking out of it. So I can take my table saw templates here and I can just slide them on. And we have a little template holder. Nice. And for my disc sander attachment I made this little holder. All it is is a piece of three quarter inch plywood with two strips down the center so that my disc sander can't fall out the side and a front piece just to hold it in. So we can put this on the wall. So now we can take my disc sander and we can put it in the slot that we made there. And when it's time to use the disc sander, it comes out nice and easy. Now my pocket hole jig holder is extremely easy. All it is is a piece of three quarter inch plywood with my French clean on the back and just a random scrap. And we've just screwed it to the uh, board and we can nice and easily just hang it on there. Now I can thank my grandfather for this because he actually built his own holder that he screwed into his studs in his workshop for his uh, high speed turning tools. So all I did was I just put a French clean on the back and now they sit there. Our circuit saw on here. Nice. And we also made one for my router. So it's nice. And we also made one for my bread. It's not much, but it's a start. Pretty soon this whole wall will be full of tools. I think this French police system is really going to help me stay organized in the shop. Thanks for watching everybody. Please remember to like and subscribe if you like what you see and you want to see more. See ya.